Hi everyone, it's Natasha. Since today is a cool, clammy day, I decided to make some chili. I've already done some of the prep work, so I have just about a pound, maybe a pound and a quarter of uh, ground beef left. In my pot, which I have not turned on yet, I have a heaping tablespoon of coconut oil, and that's what I'm going to start uh, sauteing the onions and garlic. It's a cup of onions and four cloves of garlic chopped. Uh, a cup of celery, probably a cup and a quarter of assorted uh, peppers, uh, bell, yellow, green, uh, red, and jalapenos, which are finely diced. And then some of the dehydrated vegetables that I made uh, a couple of weeks ago, it's tomatoes, which will essentially replace the tomato paste, and some of the green and purple peppers, as well as my soaked and drained beans and I have a combination of two different kinds of beans a cup each of black beans and um, northern white beans so let's get started oh and those look like this <laughs> before you soak them they get plumper and as you can see because I soaked the white and the black beans together some of the white beans look purple which is perfectly fine by me they're not going to taste any different and everybody's gonna join the same party anyway. So let's get cooking. Oh, and while this is all sauteing, I'm going to prep the tomatoes. I'm gonna to use fresh tomatoes because I have them and I need to use them. And we're trying very hard not to use canned products, which is why I have um, dried beans that I rehydrated overnight, rather than canned beans, which we ordinarily use. Even soaking them or rinsing them, there's still a lot of sodium. This way I control the sodium. That I'm going to put in here so I'll show you along the way. Let's start sauteing the onions and garlic first. Check it out. Party is already started in the pot and I'm using a cast iron uh, looker say so a heavy bottom pot is really helpful. Um, I let the onions go three or four minutes on their own with a little with the garlic. I don't want the garlic to burn so I added the celery and the pepper combination in. I'm leaving out the dried uh, veggies until a little later. I want this to start to sweat. Um, it's a uh, mirepoix or um, the Holy Trinity or um, sofrito. There's all sorts of, this is the starter to all the flavors. Uh, some, let me blow away the steam. Some um, traditions have carrots, others have uh, peppers. I have onions, garlic, and pepper. Um, so, yeah, it's smelling delicious already, and that's all there is, is a little coconut oil, which um, is our current preference. Um, it adds, you don't really taste coconut, it doesn't, it doesn't taste like a tropical concoction in the end. You don't taste it, but it's much, much better for you. So I'm going to sweat out the veggies until they start to get a little translucent. I don't want color, I just want them to start to do their thing, add the aroma in here is just magnificent. I, I just love that, love, love the smell of that, the sound of it, the sizzling, the whole thing. So just about when these are done, or at a point where I want them to be, I'm going to add the dehydrated veggies which will add um, a concentrated flavor of the peppers and tomatoes. And then I will add in the meat and saute that until it's no longer pink. And then start adding uh, the moisture, so the diced tomatoes, which I'm going to work on next. And the last thing that's going to be added is the are the beans and then all of the seasonings, which I will show you um, in a minute what I'm going to use. The chili powder, uh, a little cayenne, because I'm going to be careful. Flavors develop especially spicy flavors develop over time and, and as things cook and sit so I don't want to overdo the heat you can always add more in it's harder to take it away so yeah delicious and beautiful as you can see the vegetables have diminished in volume and the color is not as bright uh, but there's no color yet so I'm gonna add or there's no uh, color from the heat so I'm gonna add the dehydrated veggies. The moment they heat, they hit the heat, you can really smell that 
So I'm going to let them plump just a little bit and I'm going to take this whole concoction out and I'm going to saute the meat separately so I can drain it in case there's any, you know, fat that renders off. I don't want it to spread throughout the whole vegetable mixture. So there's the sauteed veggies out and resting and the meat is in the pot and I'm just letting it uh, simmer into a point where, see all those fat being rendered off, I'm going to definitely drain that off. I don't need to add that back into our finished chili. Um, I'm going to keep doing this and turning it until there's no more pink and uh, then start adding everything back and in the meantime I'm going to peel and dice the juicy tomatoes, fresh tomatoes. As you can see, all of the meat is now, there's no more pink, but look at all that extra fat. So we definitely want to get rid of that. So I'm going to um, transfer the beans to a bowl and then use that same strainer to strain off the fat. Or I'm just going to dump the whole thing into the strainer and then return the meat back to the pot. So I'll show you that in a second. Look, look at all that. Completely unnecessary. Yucky. There's the meat strained off. See there's nothing cooling at the bottom. I'm gonna add the veggies and then start adding the tomatoes. So the veggies have been added in. I have put in about a heaping teaspoon of cracked black pepper. And I'm gonna put in a tablespoon of Mrs. Dash. It's salt free and it has in it onions, black pepper, parsley, celery seed, basil, bay, marjoram, oregano, savory thyme, cayenne pepper, coriander, cumin, mustard, rosemary, garlic, carrot, orange peel, tomato, lemon, um, lemon juice powder, citric acid, and oil of lemon. So um, I'm going to add that now and then once I add the tomatoes and the beans I'm going to add the cumin and chili powder and a touch of cayenne. I have to first see how much zest there's already in there. And it looks beautiful already. Love all the colors. So let me add a tablespoon. So the veggies have been added in. I have put in about a heaping teaspoon of cracked black pepper. And I'm going to put in a tablespoon of Mrs. Dash. It's salt free and it has in it onions, black pepper, parsley, celery seed, basil, bay, marjoram, oregano, savory thyme, cayenne pepper, coriander, cumin, mustard, rosemary, garlic, carrot, orange peel, tomato, lemon, um, lemon juice powder, citric acid, and oil of lemon. So um, I'm going to add that now and then once I add the tomatoes and the beans I'm going to add the cumin and chili powder and a touch of cayenne. I have to first see how much zest there's already in there. And it looks beautiful already. Love all the colors. So let me add a tablespoon. So there's a tablespoon of uh, Mrs. Dash added in. Just gonna mix it in. I did turn the stove top off because I have to finish prepping the tomatoes um, before, and I didn't want this to start to get stuck to the bottom before I added the liquidy portion of the tomatoes. Now I'm going to use the same bowl I just used for the veggies to put my tomatoes in. I'm going to save the juice and everything and put that in here. The only thing I'm going to do is peel the outside skin and then dice them roughly. I don't, they, they'll start to break down in the chili because I'm going to cook it in the oven on low for a couple hours. So what I have here is probably about two, two and a quarter cups of tomatoes and the juice. And I may need more. Let me mix this up and see if they'll start to release their juices. I may need to open a can of tomato puree. Yeah, let me go grab a can of tomato puree. So I'm adding a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. ounce of diced tomatoes. That should add plenty of liquid. Let me mix this up and we can start adding the spices and the beans. So I have ground 
coriander, ground cumin, and ground chili powder. I'm going to put a dash of coriander, a teaspoon of cumin, and probably start off with two tablespoons of chili powder. I haven't added the beans yet because I think the spices will um, mix better in just this more liquid form until I add the beans and then it's going to get pretty thick. So that is the chili, that is the cumin, and that's the coriander. Just a little bit. So let's mix it in and then give it a little taste test to see how the spice levels are. So I've mixed in the seasoning, uh, the ground coriander, which is probably half a teaspoon, a, tea a heaping teaspoon of ground cumin, and as it turns out, I added another tablespoon of uh, chili powder. So that's three tablespoons of chili powder. And we go through chili powder pretty quickly in our house. This was probably only a couple of months old. Uh, make sure that you're not using old spices. They start to lose their potency and you know, if you're following um, a recipe you're not going to get the full results. Um, it could also go bad. Uh, things can go rancid. So the tomatoes are still going to leach off some more juices, so I'm happy with the consistency. I'm going to add the beans and I'll show you what it looks like. I have the oven preheating, which will be ready in about 30 seconds. And then this is going to go lidded, with the lid on, in the oven for uh, about an hour before I check it. And the reason I put it in the oven is that I don't have to stir it, because the heat is going to be constant all around instead of just at the bottom, even though this is a bottom, a heavy bottom um, cast iron uh, aluminum pot, you know, um, enameled pot, um, there's still only heat coming from one location in the oven. The heat is all around, so you don't really need to stir. Oh, see? Temperature's up. It's 300 degrees. I'm going to add the beans, and I'll show you what it looks like before I pop it in the oven. So there's the chili with the beans in. It's a lot of beans. So last night when I went to soak them, it was a cup of black beans and a cup of uh, white northern white beans and as they soak they take on volume so it's probably close to three and a half maybe four cups of beans that are in here which is okay because there wasn't a lot of meat there was probably about a pound of uh, ground beef that was in there so it's really mostly vegetables and a little meat so I'm gonna stir this up um, it's always better, if you're putting something in the oven to slow cook, best to bring it up up to temperature on top of the stove. That way the oven doesn't have to work that much harder or it's not, the time frame is instantaneous. So you bring it up to temperature on top of the stove and then you put it in the oven and the even cooking continues throughout so it doesn't have to come up to temperature in the oven. So as you can see, it's starting to percolate. I'm gonna turn off the stove top because I don't need that anymore. And, uh, Pop it in the oven and we'll check it in an hour and see what it looks like. Hopefully the beans will start to get tender and that's the key because the beans were dried. I want to make sure that those are cooked through because everything else is cooked essentially. It's the development of flavors that we want so that's what we're going to look for in about an hour. So we'll check back then. Check it out. So it is oh two hours. <sighs> looks so good. I'm going to taste the beans to make sure that they're cooking through and that will determine how much longer I will put in the oven for. Looks so good. Smells so good. And the vegetables aren't falling apart. They're still intact, but look at all these luscious beans and oh, the, the house smells so good. Yummy, yummy. The chili's done. Look at that. Nothing is stuck to the bottom. I'll show you. because the heat was never at the source there. It was all around. That's why I like making it in the oven. You can also do this in a crock pot. You're not gonna develop the same kind of depth of flavor from the level of heat because the way crock pots work, there's still a single source of heat at the very bottom. So in the oven, I feel, cause like that crispy bits on the, ooh. The things you see on the sides of the pot, which easily wash off, not a problem. That's where the a lot of the flavors, you know, you can see the flavor development. And it's just going to sit quietly on top of the stove. I took it out of the oven. The oven's off. Um, we probably won't eat for another 
three, three and a half hours, which is fine. At that point, it'll be room temperature. I will be able to refrigerate what we're now going to have tonight. I can even freeze some individual portions um, to use for emergency emergency weeknight meals, which I might do. The same way I saved jambalaya a couple months ago and I had it for lunch one day and I'm like, we should really do this more often because I had a home cooked meal without doing any of the work because I already did the work before. So there you go, there's chili and we'll probably have it in bowls with some shredded cheese, maybe sour cream and some sweet Vidalia onions chopped up because I left a little piece and uh, the flavors are perfect. Uh, there's nice residual heat kind of in the back, nothing that knocks you out. The beans are cooked without completely disintegrating. As you can see, each individual bean is still intact, but they're cooked through. I did taste them about 40 minutes or so ago, half hour ago. That's why I decided to take it out. The house smells wonderful, so it's absolutely thumbs up. It's a easy peasy recipe. You don't really have to do. After you prep everything, saute and pop it in the oven, it could cook for you slow, slowly while you're working. So this is one of the benefits of me working from home. I'm able to prep this and cook it during the day. And now we have meal all ready for us when I'm done working. So there you go. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I will post the full recipe or approximation of recipes. As you saw, I don't, re don't measure a lot. Uh, there's a few things I did measure, but I will post those on my blog and there'll be a link below. As always, don't forget to thumbs up. It's free for you and helps me out. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, everyone.